Welcome everyone. Welcome to this special video that I have on the war on women. I just can't not do it at a time like this. Being a woman and going through the issues as an American woman that many of us are going through. And let me say for those of you who are wondering, what about the war on men? Are we going to talk about men? Well, God willing, I'm going to get to it next month in June. Because to be completely honest with you, I feel that the war on women really started with a war on men. I mean, these are historically the people who have been the protectors, the providers, the defenders for women. And so why women are dealing with an attack on femininity right now, I think goes back to men. We will get to that. <laughs> and no, it's not gonna be male bashing, okay? Um, but it will be some honest conversation, right? And hopefully we'll come up with some solutions um, by the end of each video on what we can do constructively to repair the situation. Um, I am going to talk in this video about the women's movement and issues related to that. Uh, we'll talk about culture wars um, resulting in the loss of opportunities for women, the loss of protected spaces for biological females. And why is this all happening? And I'm gonna put something out there. Is this is this a psyop? Okay, well, we gotta ask it. Let, let's talk about it. I know some of you might think, whoa, she's pulling out the tinfoil hat. Yes, Aquarius here is pulling out the tinfoil hat. Let's do it. Um, and and honestly, I think by the end of that discussion, if you if you stick to that belief of it not being a psyop, I think that you will maybe have a stronger understanding of why other people disagree. Um, and then I want to close out with solutions. What can we do about all of this? And so um, let me say that, again, if you want to make sure you are being notified when I release the War on Men video, make sure that you are subscribed. You've activated the bell for notification. And for those of you who like my astrological commentary about how it ties into current events, politics and all of that. Um, I will not have it here in this because I, I don't want to get a deer in the headlights. I want to reach more people and the mass majority of people are going to get a deer in the headlights if I start astro nerding out. So if you want that content, um, again, make sure that you are subscribed. You've activated the bell for notifications so that you can get my astrology where I tie it into current events and politics and all of that. Um, and also, let me say something I don't ordinarily say, and I think I'm going to be saying it a lot more in these videos, and that is uh, what I'm putting out here is quite dangerous. My channel has already been blacklisted, okay? Um, how on earth do you have 24,000 subscribers and you're lucky if you get 100 views on a video, okay? And I've been doing this channel since 2017. So, um, and I'm doing great over on TikTok where I haven't been blacklisted. You know, I have far, far less subscribers on TikTok, yet I get far, far more views on the same content that I'm posting over here. So the reason I'm mentioning this is because this particular video that I'm putting out is content that could conceivably be flagged in the future. And this platform is known for changing up policies willy-nilly and making them retroactive where let's say I make this in 2023, which I am, but then in 2024, when things start getting aggressive with the selections, uh, they might change their policy where they don't want people talking about this. And then I get flagged on this video and all it takes is three for them to flag and they could totally take the whole, uh, the whole channel down. Th these are real issues that content, real content creators face, and it's why there's a muzzle on a lot of us. We've been going to other platforms. So what I'm going to say to you that I don't normally say is, please make sure you're following me on other platforms in the event that now or in the future I am taken down because of content like this that I'm really risking my channel uh, on by putting it out there. Let's try to stay um, in contact. And you can do that by making sure that you're following me on Instagram, TikTok, and I do have just solely political content on Twitter and Rumble. Oh, and also I am on Odyssey and BitChute as well. All right, so I'm going to um, get into this video. 
So let's talk about the loss of opportunities and the loss of protected spaces that we have been seeing most recently. Some of you may have already heard, Riley has been bringing up this topic of whether or not it is fair for biological males to compete against biological females in sports. You know, and that's in women's swimming, but we've also seen in other areas like female boxing, women just getting brutally beat by biological males who identify as trans women. Never before was it okay for a man to beat on a woman, but now they're entering into boxing as trans women and just beating them to a pulp. And so the question is, why is it now suddenly okay for a biological male to be, in some cases physically, literally be a biological female? Why is this okay? We've long known, I'm old school, I'm just gonna let you know up front, I'm old school, Generation X, when we were taught science that you either got XX or XY, and medically, scientifically, biological men have more muscle mass pound for pound than a female. This is not about discrimination. This is about science. This is about facts. But now suddenly this is thrown out the window and nobody seems to care about this anymore. And, and what we're seeing now is that women's sports is just being obliterated. All of these medals, trophies, awards are going to biological males in women's sports. And people are saying, well, what's going on here? Are these men who couldn't compete against biological males and now they are entering into female sports and it's not a fair match. It's not fair at all. Are these failed male athletes who are now trying to play uh, against an unfair opponent or competitor? There's also been increasing awareness of these paid influencers who again are trans women such as Dylan Mulvaney and I hate to bring him up because I'm, I think we're all sick and tired of it at this point but I mean listen you can't not know about this Dylan is has been you know with Bud Light, Nike, Tampax, Olay, Judy Bloom. Um, all of these lucrative contracts have been going to Dylan. Why? Why does he get all of these lucrative contracts to represent women, right? For Nike, it was the sports bras. Um, Tampax, Olay, obviously women's products, but we, we have a trans woman now, a biological male representing women's products. Why couldn't they give that contract to a woman? And then the Judy Bloom, right? I don't know, again, you know, Generation X here, we grew up on Judy Bloom and it was for girls, you know, going through puberty. <laughs> you know, and, and, but now we've got this trans woman who is piping in and being the voice of, I don't know. And now when men are feminine, we love it. We're applauding it. We're giving them campaigns. They're sponsored by Maybelline and Nike and Bud Light. And then when women do their normal thing, you know, be mothers and provide, nurture, take care of things, they're looked down upon or referred to as birthing persons, chest feeders, cis women. So when we do the thing that's natural to us and naturally makes us powerful, ugh, who cares about that? But when a man does it, nature. What's going on here? Why is it suddenly okay? Um, people are arguing that women, women are being erased. And they're also arguing that suddenly we have woman face going on. And that's what Dylan is being accused of is practicing woman face, which is akin to black face. And people are asking, you know what? If it's okay, if it's not okay to do blackface, why is it okay to do woman face? Let's go a little bit more personal, okay? Because you know that's all out in the. We're, many of us are just sitting in our homes watching this stuff on the sidelines. It's not really hitting so close to home, unless you are a biological female in a prison or in a woman's domestic violence sexual assault shelter. Oh yes. This issue is reaching those people. It's affecting those people. And I don't know if you caught it, but about a month and a half, two months ago, James O'Keefe put out an expose on what's happening within the prison system here in the United States, which is now accepting trans women, trans prisoners, men who in some cases identified as males, men, 
prior to being sentenced, but then even up until the point of being sentenced by a judge, suddenly changed their pronouns and declared that they identify as a woman. And now in this day and age, we no longer have science, XX, XY, or, you know, the very minute percentage of the population that is intersex, right? That is exceedingly rare, okay? Now it's a feeling, no more science. We just, being a woman has now a feeling. It is not a biological chromosomal condition. It is now reduced down to a feeling. And so when they feel during sentencing that now I feel like I am a woman, how convenient they get transferred to a woman's prison. And James O'Keefe of OMG was saying, you know, showing insiders uh, with the DOJ saying that a lot of government funding is tied to this and they're admitting, they're admitting to men pulling these little games to get, not have to be placed with the men in the prison, but to be placed around a lot of females. Women should be legally treated as women. Tell me why you're strongly disagreeing. Because I'm a molecular geneticist. Being male or being female is a developmental process. You can't go backwards. So you can't change your sex like you cannot do that currently in california prisons and prisons in other parts of the country women are getting impregnated by other women you cannot house female prisoners with male prisoners because they get raped and that's happening today and it's not in the news it's not in the common news oh, okay. but i know about it Last year, Washington State passed a bill that would limit the public's ability to get information on the males housed with women. The director of Women's Liberation Front put it succinctly in that they are prioritizing the desires of males over the safety of women, and now there's no transparency. And it's pretty much against, you know, the Freedom of Information Act. If you are surprised that you haven't heard about any of the women who have been assaulted and impregnated in prisons across this, the country, it's on purpose that you haven't been hearing about it. You should probably start asking more. There's a reason why they don't want to be in men's prisons, because men beat each other to death. This is the most insane thing that has ever happened to me in my life, that women are a feeling now. If a man is who has tra transitioned has F on his driver's license, and then he gets arrested, they're going to put him in a cell Correct. with women. Correct. And his hands are stronger, his body is stronger, and he can beat that woman to death. And shockingly, there's reports that some of these men are plotting and scheming to get women pregnant, to sue the government, and have what they call a million dollar baby. Um, if you wanna know more about that, I will put links below because I know this platform here is not really good about helping people find anything from James O'Keefe, okay? <laughs> He's another one that's been suppressed and blacklisted, all right? Um, but along the same lines uh, of what's going on with the prisons and that expose, it's also happening in shelters. And what's going on all over the nation now is we have a lot of reports surfacing of women being raped and even impregnated in women's shelters and women's prisons. And unfortunately, women who have tried to speak up and stand up against this are being told by staff, we don't discriminate, which for me is gaslighting. It implies that if you speak against this, you must be transphobic. You must be hateful. You must be a discriminator, okay? And in worst cases, I've heard reports of women and children getting kicked out of shelters they were over, over raising questions about this. They were fleeing a domestic violence situation or sexual assault uh, situation because usually of a man, they try to go to a protected safe space to get away from men 
and yet they find these biological men who actually may have, in some cases, a history of SA and DV. And these women are put out on the curb with their children for discriminating, as it is called. I'm not going to lie. When I saw that, that to me was scary because I've lived the shelter life. I've been homeless, so I've seen it firsthand. You know, dealing with uh, women who have been sheltered because of DV situations. But the DV situations also toppled with SA and um, women being RP'd, amongst other things. And I'm sorry, but having trans women, especially those that still have their Johnson, that opens up a whole can of worms because those are triggers. And a woman who's been victimized, who's trying to seek refuge because they're trying to get rid of that trauma. It doesn't matter whether this trans woman looks and emulates a female. The fact that they still have a Johnson and that victim gets whim of that, it's just going to cause a whole lot of problems. And I don't think that these shelters are realizing that. And yeah, it's it's just a sad situation. I really do not think that trans women, especially those that still have their Johnson, need to even be in the same vicinity with um, DV women. They just do not. It's not going to help them with their um, progress, with their recovery, knowing that fact. It's one of those topics that needs to be discussed, right? Like... We're all for people doing whatever they want in the comfort of their own home. But once you start putting the politics of it all in there, it gets complicated. It's the exact same reason why you can't have trans people going to jails because there's going to be more pregnancies, there's going to be more sexual assaults. And then with this too, it was supposed to be a woman's shelter, a woman's safe place where she escapes danger. And this is her safety zone and she's not even safe there. They need to do something about this. It's not okay. So we are witnessing a loss of protected spaces for women. Um, and recently uh, we had feminist activist Posey Parker put on a public gathering where they were trying to address this. And we saw on video at that event that there were a lot of trans activists out there who were getting quite aggressive, quite threatening. And it's not a fluke, people. There's a lot of incidences. There's a lot of occurrences of so-called TERFs, trans-exclusionary radical feminists, as they're called, having their lives threatened, which they're basically treating Posey Parker as if she is a TERF, okay? Start looking at, you know, other events going on where we see more of this uh, trans aggression, like the recent um, school massacre in Tennessee. And I could go on, all right? If you want to research this, I don't want to make the whole video about that, okay? But trust me, there's a lot of other, it's not an isolated event is a point I'm trying to make to you. And, and shockingly, what we're seeing on, on video camera footage is not only is there a lot of aggression, physical violence threatened by these biological males who identify as trans women, but we're also seeing police and school authorities turning a blind eye to that aggression because it's not politically correct and because there is a lot of funding tied to them maintaining this political correctness. And we saw that, by the way, with Riley if you go look at uh, her giving a speech at a university, and again, there was a lot of trans uh, aggression over there where she was locked up in a room for several hours. I'm coming, I'm good, I'm good. Trust me, I'm good.
Um, the video doesn't do a good job showing of just how many were in these stairways. I mean, it was hundreds of people. But these people, they were outside the rooms, and one side of the hallway would yell, trans rights are under attack, and the other side would yell back, what do we do? We fight back. And they kept using the term, we fight back. And so after I'd finally been barricaded and, and I was in this room for a couple hours and they kept saying it, I'm like, why do they keep, keep saying we fight back? Because the day before this incident at San Francisco State, the Biden administration press secretary had a press release, a press conference where she says word for word, our trans community is resilient and they fight back. And I find it so Ironic, they were using the exact same verbiage, we fight back. They kept saying it continuously. We've used the term domestic terrorists a lot in, in this hearing, and that's co constantly something I get called um, by these same left-leaning protesters who, um, again, for simply saying women deserve fairness, we deserve safety, and we deserve privacy, and we deserve respect. And I get called a domestic terrorist all the time. I don't know, again, it's just disheartening to be in the position I'm in, feeling like I'm asking for the bare minimum, I'm feeling like I'm asking for something that is so simple that we all are entitled to, yet I'm being, you know, held hostage. A lot of feminists like Posey Parker who are arguing, this is not what we fought for. And you even have people in the LGB community are now wanting to divorce themselves from the TQIA plus community. Um, groups like Gays Against Groomers um, online uh, who are going out and speaking against all of these, you know, drag queen uh, story time events and drag shows and pride shows and blah, blah, blah. They're bravely going to school board councils and speaking out against this as grooming. And then yet we're seeing on these major social media platforms, that group has been blacklisted and suppressed. They've been censored online. But it doesn't end there. Even liberals like Bill Maher and Pierce Morgan got into a pretty heated debate about this, uh, you know, about like what is going on with feminism? This is not what we fought for, um, you know, and, and, and I, I am happy to see that there are liberals who are waking up and they're confronting other liberals like Katie Porter on this issue. Nobody including Riley Gaines, who I disagree with strongly, should be should What do you disagree with out of interest? Um, I I think that it should be up to sporting bodies to make the decisions about who but and what how she should What has she said that's actually wrong? I think that what she has done is try to turn this... We talked about people, you know, becoming... using things to kind of get likes and get clicks. That's not what she's doing. Riley is speaking up for herself, and that is her prerogative, and I respect her free speech. I think she's speaking okay, up for but... pretty much every female athlete in the world. I... I mean... I mean... This seems to be the opposite of that. It seems to be so many instances, I think, where wokeness is the opposite of what I grew up as liberalism. Right. Liberalism and, was let's give and, the women an equal shot. I mean, this is let, let's I mean, put a male in the in the swimming pool right, with the women. I don't get it. It's crazy. I mean, meanwhile, trans people who genuinely want to compete at athletics and swimming or whatever it may be, they they're the ones who are suffering here. They need to be found a way to compete fairly and justly. Well, what's your answer then? I think there's one or two answers. I think they either compete against their biological sex as many of them did before, or you create an entirely new category for a transgender athlete. And then they're able to compete fairly. But what you cannot do is continue to allow more and more trans athletes to start decimating women's records. It, in some cases, irrevocably. It's just not fair. Okay. So these conversations that are coming up, I think on the positive are bringing us to this question of what is authentic femininity by the way, I did make a video several years ago about this. I guess about two or three years ago. I'll have it at the end of this, so if you want to click on through, you can watch it. Um, but it's a conversation I think that more of us need to consider. What is authentic femininity? And I'll talk about authentic masculinity when I do the next video for June on the war on men. But, you know, going back to that core question, what is authentic femininity? Does it mean a woman doing everything a man can do? Because I think that's something that 
the most recent waves of feminism have tried to put out there? Or is it that actually authentic femininity is about women doing what only women can do with excellence? In my opinion, that is giving and nurturing life. Why are we ashamed of that, okay? Uh, it's not that we can't do other things. It's where do we excel? Where do we stand apart? What makes us unique and distinct from biological men? And I think that more women need to ask themselves, why are we ashamed of being housewives, soccer moms? You know, you fill in the blank. Where did the shame come from? Why is making a house a home? Or being the CEO of your household, why is this something that is not as honorable in this society as being a boss bitch? or not needing a man. Actress Evangeline Lilly has this quote that's now gone viral. Why are we only applauding masculinity in women and villainizing it in men? And why are we only applauding femininity in men and debasing it in women? She's hitting the nail on the head. Nailed it. We love a good masculine woman girl boss. Stick to your post and follow my orders. <laughs> but when men display their masculinity. How dare you? Why is it that women, for example, since the 1960s have struggled with something so natural to womanhood such as and mothering such as breastfeeding okay for example preferring to just pay for an inferior product like formula i mean this is just an example what happened how did we get here where did this disdain for womanhood mothering motherhood where did it come from is this a psyop i mean really is it a PSYOP? And some of you maybe don't know what a PSYOP is. It's a psychological operation. And by definition, it's considered a military operation that has been designed to influence the perceptions and attitudes of individuals, groups, and governments. And I know some of you are like, oh, here's the tinfoil hat, right? <laughs> some of you, oh no, that would never really happen. Well, hopefully after 2020, because that was a major PSYOP, if you ask me, okay? Um, I think that we should all know that a lot of things are possible, okay? Look at this documentary that Matt Walsh recently put out uh, called What is a Woman? If you haven't watched it, please do. I probably need to put a link for that down below as well um, for those of you who want to dive deeper into the subject. But uh, if you haven't seen the documentary already, you, I'll just tell you, he goes from, you know, university to university, um, pro professor and intellectual upon professor and intellectual, asking them just a simple question, what is a woman? And they can't answer. I care about the women who are having their opportunities stolen from them. Is it transphobic to tell the truth? The interview's over. Let's turn off the cameras. Excuse me. Well, they're fair. I just wanted to know what is a woman. And you're not going to find out. Well, this is one of the problems with this left-wing gender ideology is that no one who espouses it can even tell you what these words mean. It's like, what is a woman? Well, can you tell me what a woman is? No, I can't. You stood up here and said trans women are women. Yes. Tell me what you mean. Womanhood is something that is an umbrella term. It includes people that who- That describes what? People who identify as a woman. I identify as what? As a woman. What is that? Was to each their own. But listen, you won't listen, even tell me what the word reduce, means, though. So you that's You want to reduce problem. women, you want to reduce men down to maybe just their genetics, our genitals, no. our chromosomes, right? That's what you're what saying. You is is that, a, that's what what, you, what you want to do is appropriate women. You want to appropriate womanhood okay. and turn it into basically a costume that could be worn. Have you ever, especially if you've been around as long as I have, right? Uh, have you ever before seen people struggle to answer the question of what is a woman? And they can't. They can't answer it. Usually the answer is, you know, these are very learned people, very astute, highly respected intellectuals, and they can't answer the question that a female, a woman, I should say, is an adult human female. And I think that's now why we've got this Twitter hashtag going around um, where people are like, yes, I am an adult human female, but nobody wants to talk about that. In fact, I recently was on Twitter and I saw that a young woman had a, was trying to do a report on this in college and the professor has given her a zero or refused her the opportunity because she's now not allowed to say biological female. It is now considered hate speech. Suddenly, 
We have never had this before in history. Where is this coming from? Who started this and why is what I'd like to ask. Um, because you have a lot of, you know, American intellectuals in what I would like to term as the higher miseducation system, who, um, when asked this question, what is a woman? Their answer is, well, it's, you know, it's a feeling. It's a feeling. But what is a feeling? No, and they can't answer it. So, um, and even recently, I've seen some um, Biden nominees, a particular one was asked this question um, when being interviewed, publicly interviewed for this public office. And the answer was, you know, well, I can't answer. I'm not a biologist. Can you provide a definition for the word woman? Can I provide a definition? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. I can't. You can't? N not in okay. this context. So I'm not a biologist. The of the Why do you need to be a biologist to answer what a biological female, a human, a, a woman is? Why? It just goes on and on and on. Why can't we answer the simple question? What has for generations, for centuries, been a simple question with a simple answer. Now all of a sudden it's gotten very complicated, it's gotten confusing, and people are afraid to speak the truth. Furthermore, how is woman face any different from black face, as I mentioned earlier? How is womanhood now reduced down to a feeling, and this is okay? Why are we suddenly disregarding the science of XX versus XY chromosomes? Do we not believe in that anymore? And why this reaction when people confront or counter this psychological shift in culture. And I think the answer to that question is partly that you have a lot of people in media and um, people with government funded institutions, such as yes, the prison system, the educational system, um, even women's and domestic violence shelters, um, I could go on they're not going to bite the hand that feeds them by pushing back on this agenda. Actually, I know in Canada, there is a women's domestic violence and sexual assault shelter that pushed back on this. And they had their funding stripped from them. It is a hit to their budget. One Hilla Kerner with the Vancouver Rape Relief and Women's Shelter says they didn't see coming. I think it's an undemocratic and coercive decision I think the city should have respected um, our autonomy to operate the way we are. Kerner says over the past 10 years, there's never been a question from the city about approving municipal money for public education. But this year, the renewal has been successfully challenged by critics who say rape relief's pledge to serve only women and not trans women is discrimination. Of course, the transgender people should receive services and they deserve safety and dignity like the rest of us. It does not and should not need to be the expense on women's groups like ours. By who? A trans woman, a biological male, who ironically used his energy and his resources to strip funding from biological females rather than try to create opportunities to fund domestic violence and abuse shelters for the trans community, specific to their needs. I think that's also very telling. But transgender rights activist Morgan Auger says Vancouver Rape Relief is the last organization of its kind to uphold such a policy. We need to test our rules and our policies about inclusion on the more difficult and complex cases. And there's no doubt that this is a complex case. But hiding behind the idea that they're the only ones who can provide the service is ridiculous. City Councilor Sarah Kirby-Young says she considered this debate and new inclusive municipal policies in making her decision. Our job is to stand up for people that um, are discriminated against. When you're talking about public funding and taxpayer dollars, we want to support organizations that support the values of inclusion that the City of Vancouver has stood up for. What I care about is uh, elected officials, they did not upheld the responsibility to the women of Vancouver. Much of rape relief's funding comes from the provincial government and Kerner says she does not expect that will change. Nadia Stork, Global News. Again, there is a hostility there. There is 
a desire within the trans women community to invade biological women's spaces. And when there is pushback, they become quite violent. And you see this in a number of ways. You see it either, you know, the physical violence with the protests like we saw with Riley, we saw with um, Posey Parker protests, we've seen with the trans massacre events, okay, that have gone on recently. But you're also seeing this aggression and vindictiveness and hostility coming up with trying to actually just pull funding, pull resources from biological women. And I think that people need to consider the heart of the matter. What is it that these trans women are trying to do when they would rather attend to stripping resources from biological women than to add resources specific to the trans community and their unique population? who has unique needs that I would argue are at odds with the unique needs of biological females and their children who are in these situations. I'm going to say that what's happening here is similar to 2020. You have people's complicity being bought, partly because the moral compass of a lot of people is gone. And if you look back at 2020 to how many doctors and hospitals looked the other way with what was going on, and that was into 2021, 2022, and it's now coming out that people risked their own health and they endangered the health of others because they were getting kickbacks. A lot of people were in big med and even people who were not tied to big med, they took on a lot of risks because there was a fear of losing status among their friends and peers. It is a huge issue right now culturally that is going on where anybody could be bought for over damn near anything because there's no moral compass. Culturally, that has been eroded and some would argue that it's all by design. The moralization process in the United States is basically completed already. Actually, it's over-fulfilled because demoralization now reaches such areas where previously not even Comrade Andropov and, and all his experts would, would even dream of such a tremendous success. Most of it is done by Americans to Americans, thanks to lack of moral standards. As I mentioned before, exposure to true information does not matter anymore. A person who was demoralized is unable to assess true information. The facts tell nothing to him. Uh, even if I shower him with information, with, with authentic proof, with documents, with pictures. So basically America is stuck with, with demoralization and unless, even if, if you start right now, here, this minute, you start educating new generation of Americans, it will still take you 15 to 20 years to turn the tide of, uh, of ideological perception of reality uh, back to normal, n normalcy and, and uh, patriotism. So if this is a PSYOP, how long has it been going on? Was the women's movement of the 1970s, which I was born into, <laughs> um, was that a PSYOP? Because, uh, you know, some people have, have said that the real reason for the women's movement is not what you think. And I got to bring this up because as we're reflecting on that, keep it in your mind. What's the real reason for the trans movement? All right. Because I would say it's probably not what you think. Now, we were told that the women's movement of the 1970s was to liberate women. But in reality, it's been said that actually it was a plan by the elite to increase the tax base. You get more women in the workforce, you're able to pull more taxes from those paychecks. We were talking and he started laughing. He said, Aaron, what do you think women's liberation was about? And uh, I said, I, I'm pretty conventional thinking about it at that point. I said, I think it's about women having the right to work, getting equal pay with men, just like they won the right to vote, you know? And he started to laugh. He said, you're an idiot. And I said, why am I an idiot? He said, you want me, let me tell you what that was about. We, the Rockefellers, funded that. We funded Women's Lib, you know? And we're the ones who got all over the newspapers and television, the Rockefeller Foundation. He says, and you want to know why? He says, there were two primary reasons. 
and they were one reason was we couldn't tax half the population before women's lib. And the second reason was now we get the kids in school at an early age. We can indoctrinate the kids how to think. So it breaks up their family. The, the kids start looking at the state as the family, as the school, as the officials, as their family, not as the parents teaching them. And are women better off for this? Arguably not. Maybe during that time, it was a cultural reaction to what I would consider wounded masculinity, which again, I'll talk more about in the next segment when we talk about the war on men. But to this day, that, that remains unhealed, if you ask me, because we've gone from maybe uh, aggressive, toxic masculinity to more of a passive, all right? We've got more of a, a culture that encourages men to beta down rather than alpha up. And I'm not talking about fake alphas. I'm not talking about toxic masculinity. I'm talking about men living to their highest potential. I don't mean to get off course on that, but to say, you know, if you look at the facts of what is the outcome of the women's movement of the 1970s um, and rate the success based on that outcome uh, rather than the intentions, um, I think you will see more of the truth, right? The intention was liberate women, but the outcome is we have more of a fatherlessness ep epidemic. Women who have increasingly turned to government for protection and provision, something historically provided by men, they've had to turn to government for it. Probably where we get the same big daddy government from, right? Because it's not, well, who's your daddy? Because daddy's gone. <laughs> gone, daddy, gone. <laughs> gone with the wind. Uh, and and you gotta and you gotta turn to government for that section eight housing or that those food stamps or that women's shelter because the men have not been fulfilling that historical traditional role of protector provider and in the absence of that we now also have women who are culturally expected to not only be life givers life nurturers that traditional feminine role but also to be the protector and the provider and so the quality of life now is arguably uh, worse. We're expected to be both a man and the woman in a family. And there's been a myth, I think, perva pervasive in this culture since the 1970s that you, can, that you can do it all. But actually there's been you know, research and sociological studies out there showing, no, the truth is you can't. Not all at once. Not all at once because you know, a jack of all trades is a master of none. Women who are trying to, you know, hold down a career and excel in their career cannot really be the best moms and vice versa. If you're going to be the best mom, you can't really excel in your career. It's at odds. You can't do it all at once. Uh, something is going to fall off. So we have a lot of women also just choosing, well, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to be a career woman. Again, I think as an out, a, a reaction to men not stepping in that role. It's like, well, okay, so I'm going to have to be my own protector. I'm going to have to be my own provider. So they go after the career. They go after the higher education. But now studies are showing that these women who are childless are reporting higher rates of depression and unhappiness. Big surprise. We've got also a loneliness epidemic. A lot of uh, people who are single um, thanks to the MGTOW, Wigtow movement, which is men going their own way, women going their own way. Why? Because we have a lot of broken homes, a lot of broken families, the breakdown of the traditional family. And that's been going on, you know, for basically since the 1970s, but you fast forward currently to now, um, we have gender dysphoria at an all time high. The younger generations now, in my opinion, being Generation X, seem utterly lost and confused. Like many children and teens today, I identified myself as transgender for years. Everyone in my life immediately affirmed my new identity, either out of full support for it or just to stay neutral and not cause any issues. But the constant affirmation solidified me in my transgender identity. No one meant to lock me into an identity that would later leave me broken, ashamed, and more confused than before. They were really all just being nice. But the social transition eventually wasn't enough, and I soon felt I needed to take testosterone. And when that wasn't enough, I had a double mastectomy. And when that still wasn't enough, I had a total hysterectomy, including the removal of my uterus, cervix, fallopian tubes, and both ovaries. There's no point of contentment during a gender transition. We get fleeting moments of euphoria, but ultimately one step leads straight into the next. And I thought that in the end, I could really become a man, but all I became was a mutilated and abused version of my old self. Social transition is a big deal, and we're lying when we say that any of this is reversible.
And culturally, regardless of whether you're talking about my generation or younger, there seems to be a consistent theme of no moral compass. This is not about being religious. It's really not even entirely about being spiritual. It's about having the discernment to know that certain things, although they might feel right and might give you some temporary happiness, in the end, it is not good for all involved. It's going to lead you down a dead end in life. It's going to cause unnecessary pain and sorrow that is avoidable. This is why we need to have a moral compass, but that has been eroded. And, you know, finally, amidst all of this lack of moral compass, gender confusion, dysphoria, we have studies coming out showing that many trans males have narcissistic mothers or mothers suf suffering from uh, bipolar depression, mental disorders. And many of these trans people also have high numbers of autism. They're like on the higher functioning scale of autism disorder. So I want to put this out there. Do we even really know what's going on with this community, the trans uh, community? Because I suspect we don't. I suspect that there are many within this community who have unaddressed ment mental health issues. So I just walked into Target and the um, right behind me here where you see all these lovely swimsuits, that's where the pride display used to be. And I came in here two days ago and my seven-year-old who's non-binary saw it and said, look mom, it's pride, look, they're gonna celebrate me. And because some people complained and um, threw some stuff to the ground, or I don't know what happened, they have moved to the pride section to the back of the store. So the next time my seven-year-old comes to Target, or rather, I can't bring them here anymore, at least for the entire month of June, because if they walk in, and all the other people who walk in and go, where to go, are gonna realize that they are being successful in trying to erase them. We could do so much more than this. We're not supposed to negotiate with the terrorists. We can do so much better than this. Giving this knee-jerk response, putting them in, let's say, a general population of biological females in prisons or shelters, or allowing them to go in any bathroom they want, or worse, pushing them into life-altering irreversible surgeries, chemical surgical castration. This is not good, especially if we're talking about people who have a mental health issue that needs to be addressed. Not good at all. And those of us who are trying to speak out and say, hey, this is not about hate, to tell these people no. Being denied funding, being denied opportunities, being denied safe spaces, is in my opinion as damaging as what was done in 2021 with the people who opted out of the masking and the vaccine which we are now learning was not good for health so if this is a psyop where is it headed and why okay <laughs> i think that what we are seeing is a trend toward the normalization of pedophilia which is now got a new term called MAPS, Minor Attracted Persons. We are seeing this normalization popping up in laws and in the educational system. Again, governmental funding and ties are associated with those groups. And we are seeing, like I said before, police turning a blind eye to trans aggression. We are seeing the rules and the laws like in with the UN and California, they're relaxing, um, relaxing the rules and the laws. We're even seeing this in a, changing the language. You have people who are considering it hate speech. If you call someone who identifies a, as a woman, but is a biological male, if you call them pro, by pronouns that he doesn't prefer or she or whatever, you can't, you have to follow. They're changing the language, they're changing the laws and the enforcement with the police is just a miss. And it's not coming out that part of this 
is also happening through the corporations where we're seeing this big woke agenda, you know, being pushed through these major corporations like you saw with Bud Light um, and Dylan Mulvaney and Nike and Olay and Target recently, most recently, um, and, and the North Face brand. I mean, I could go on. All these brands, why are they doing this? Well, it's because of ESG, which is basically corporate equality index, okay, um, and CEI scores, um, which are connected to um, ESG which is basically a social credit system for corporations and it helps them to get corporate loans in the future in the name of ethical investment. They are basically requiring these corporations to do what they deem ethical, which is pushing a trans agenda. And if you don't do it, then you won't get a high social credit system or ESG score and you won't get loans, okay? Basically, it's an agenda to transform humanity, the culture, according to this group's standards. And then if you don't, if you don't comply, there's gonna be financial retribution. And so we're seeing BlackRock's uh, Larry Fink is overseeing this ESG messaging to companies. And if you don't know about BlackRock, well, you should look into it. They own just about everything. And they're trying to own all these corporations and their messaging to affect the culture. Uh, Larry Fink has been seen in his messaging to companies warning them that they better fall in line or else, basically. And that's why you're seeing these companies like Bud Light, Target, um, committing financial suicide. And because some of you would rightly, logically ask, my God, who in their right mind would do this? You know, cater to this community that, I mean, I would say most liberally accounts for, I'd say maybe 10% of the population, okay? But historically, 3% or less, okay? But now suddenly, now we've got all these people suddenly coming out and identifying as whatever, which not a big surprise. I mean, if it's now in this public school system and everybody's talking about it and it's constantly being put in your face, in your face, in your face, well, yeah, of course, little Johnny's in his formative years going to get curious about his sexuality when, my God, when I was growing up, we had to be like 10 or 11 years old before we got any kind of sex ed. And they for damn sure weren't talking about that in those sex ed class. It was just about, okay, you're about to go through puberty, so let's get you ready for that. That's all that was, you know, when I was growing up. But they're wanting to talk to these children in their formative years prior to seven years old about trans. Why? We're even seeing like the clothes, all the rainbow clothes and these binding bras at Target and these uh, intersex bathing suits for trans men or trans women so they can tuck their tucking bottoms, okay? Um, why? You know, again, never in history have we had any kind of market for this. But, but you have a major corporation like target who is targeting this minute population thereby alienating the vast majority of us who frankly don't want our little seven-year-olds in tucking bottoms or binding tops okay or you know even adolescent daughters and that my god where is this coming from why would they do this it's just financial suicide okay uh, and, and by the way, side note, it is coming out that the person who designed all this, this gear, um, is openly and verifiably a Satanist. Okay, I know, I know, it's like, <laughs> it sounds like crazy talk if you've never heard this before. Go look it up. I am not making this stuff up, okay? Um, and honestly, when you, you look at this stuff and you realize it's real, it brings you back to some LGBT people in the past who were saying, Oh, they're not coming for your children. Oh, uh, yeah, they are. They are. Um, by the way, there was a, a choir in San Francisco uh, several years ago who put out a little, we're coming for your children. We're coming for them. 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 The gay agenda. The gay agenda.
in, in hindsight, you kind of thought, well, you know, maybe they were joking. Oh, no, 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 no. They're coming for you children. <laughs> okay. Um, and I think this is why people are up in arms about it, because some, some liberals may argue, even now, in the midst of all of these revelations, you know, oh, well, it's not a big deal. What, they don't mean any harm. You know, why are you making such a big deal out of it? Um, and, and there are a lot of people who are saying, listen, we don't really have a problem with who you sleep with. We don't care. We don't. Just keep the kids out of it, okay? Just keep the kids out of it. And apparently, um, Target and even Dylan Mulvaney are having a hard time with it because, yes, those clothes are being at Target are being marketed to children. Dylan Mulvaney was even marketing his videos of Bud Light to children. Mama Bear hair doesn't like it. Oh, straight up Mama Bear. I started off being like, I understand, I have empathy for you, I will use your pronouns of choice. You know, I'm not gonna say you're a woman, but you're a trans woman. And now I am realizing that all of those things are gateway drugs to the co-opting of female sports and the word female and the word woman and breastfeeding and childbearing and menstruation, all the things that are under solidly the list of what is a woman. You don't know the first thing about being a woman. You have no idea what the average woman has been through the course of her life, the challenges we have, the beauty of being a woman, the softness of being a woman, and you never will. And I'm done engaging in this fiction, Paul. I'm done. I have empathy, I have compassion, but I am not willing to abandon truth in the name of sparing feelings. The Texas Department of Public Safety is investigating a group of women for complaining about a man being in the woman's bathroom at the Texas State Capitol. This took place on May 12th, uh, the same day that the Texas House was set to consider banning child gender mutilation. This gentleman goes by the name of Nova Martin. He was dressed in woman's attire, had a pink wig on. A group of women was in the bathroom, took photos, started complaining and saying that they should not be forced to use Capitol facilities with the biological man. Now, this gentleman um, describes himself as America's favorite trans woman, feminist, lesbian, druid, poet okay but rather than investigate the man and violating the woman's sense of safety the DPS is investigating the woman they went so far to confiscating one of the women's cell phones unbelievable this is happening in Texas I have a teenage daughter and I cannot imagine her feeling uncomfortable in a bathroom and them apprehending my daughter Abbott better do something and I know some of you are like wondering, okay, okay, Stephanie, I hear you, I hear you, but why on earth would somebody do all of this? And I know, and I think that's a major stumbling block for like a lot of people can't really hear me and accept what I'm saying at face value because they can't wrap their heads around the idea that someone would cook up such an agenda. Like why, what for, what is the point of that? And I'm gonna say in a nutshell, and I'm gonna explain, okay? Hang on with me, all right? But in a nutshell, it's this, depopulation. I know, sounds like poof, more tinfoil hat stuff. But listen, you have to realize that the people who are like Larry Fink, BlackRock, those type of people, these people are Malthusians, which basically means that they believe that calling the population is for the greater good. They believe that Earth has limited, finite resources. Therefore, the consumption of those resources by humans needs to be culled. It needs to be controlled. That's why they're, by the way, pushing for climate change regulations, which is a whole other subject, and I better not get into it here because that'll be another reason for YouTube to maybe want to, you know. Um, but arguably a carbon tax scheme that allows the government to um, profit from the taxation and control through regulations. Because trust me, if they cared so much about the environment, they wouldn't be running around all these climate change conferences in their private jets. They wouldn't be doing that. But I would like to suggest that these pro-climate change activist people or the people actually who are pushing all the taxation and regulation of it, they probably care about as much for the environment as they did for women's rights in the 1970s and even or trans rights, okay, currently today. And like I said, the proof is not only with the, the private jets that they're using, but listen, these same elites, are the, they're, these are the people who went to their little private parties during lockdowns. You have to pay attention to these things because the actions are going to tell you the truth. 
they're saying one thing, but they're doing another, right? Lock it, you stay home while I go out. <laughs> you get into an electric vehicle while I take my private jets to this location, all right? And from a business perspective, the trans agenda is also helping to cull the population. We have an increased tax base now that we have men and women in the workforce, increased people paying into the system, but then you get a lower number of people pulling from draining the system through the calling. And that creates maximum tax flow, giving security for government jobs. And I know most of us don't think like this. It's evil, wicked type of mm, thinking, okay? But you have to realize these people are not you. They don't think like you. A lot of them regard us everyday people as cattle that you are a resource to be tapped, to be exploited. And arguably, they're psychopaths, they're sociopaths, narcissists who gaslight. And if you know about gaslighting in your personal life, if you learn about that, right, I wrote a book about it. So, you know, apply it to a much larger scale. If you knew how to recognize gaslighting, you saw it back in 2020, 21, and you can even see it now with this trans agenda. If you try to say something to counter the narrative, you are now transphobic, you are now discriminating. Right, back in 2021, if you didn't do what you were told, you were a sociopath, you were a science denier, you were a conspiracy theorist, fill in the blank. There was no uh, ability to have an honest discourse about how this actually might be damaging these people and others. Any type of disputing the narrative, you get called names. You're a transphobe, you're a discriminator, you get the idea. It's gaslighting. It's basically people pretending to care, yet they instill fear in you to gain control. Fear that you're going to get called a name or have a label put on you. So you end up self-censoring, self-muzzling, and they control the narrative. They control the agenda. And yeah, now we've got you know, the supposed gender-affirming care. Watch the language here. When actually the actions are giving a totally different outcome than the supposed intention, which seems so loving and kind and humanitarian and accepting and affirming and blah, blah, blah. Fill in all the flowery words. This is rhetoric. This is persuasion. This is manipulative. All right. Gaslighting. And if you don't agree with us, then you're not a kind person. Be kind. Right. But the outcome, the, the outcome apart from the intention is people are being chemically and surgically mutilated and castrated. And this is being pushed upon children in their formative years. The end result is the same as with the abortion movement and the COVID vax and the green agenda and now trans population reduction. It all has the same outcome, depopulation. So what about the men? I think this is a great question, a great segue into that um, when I do the next video, which I'm in the process of um, researching right now. So, you know, if you have any thoughts, anything that you felt I left out, I should add, please put it in the comments down below because we are gonna talk about this war on men coming up next. I wanna go deeper into the fatherlessness epidemic. I wanna talk about wounded masculinity, how it has impacted women and children and what we can do about it because arguably, you know, the war on women started with the war on men, in my opinion. And yeah, in the meantime, if you wanna know more about embracing divine femininity, um, please watch my video on it up here. And I look forward to connecting with you again. Be blessed.